I am Demi and I am the host and digital editor for ND1023. And I'm here with Don Richard. How are you, Don? I'm so excited, so grateful to talk to you. I've got a cool little album that I'm trying to promote. And I just feel like I've been very lucky enough to have some of the coolest like people to talk to about it. And you are just one of them. Thank you. Wow, what a compliment. This is going great already. It's going great. It's going great. <laughs> How's your day going? How is your day been looking? New Orleans is good. It's been a little rainy, but I like the rain because I grew up here. So like, I like the kind of like showers that happen here, like the thunderstorms and all that stuff. But it's been kind of crazy because we've had severe floods and thunderstorms. Um, so it's a bit crazy over here right now. But I love, I, you know, I know this, this is like what I missed because I, you know, I've been all over and I kind of miss this kind of weather. So it's kind of like good. Comfort. I like the rain. Yeah. Yeah. We've had, it's, I'm here in Denver and it's been uncare, care, care, I'm going to mess up that word. I'm just going to say it. <laughs> it has been so rainy here lately. Really? And it's just, that's not Colorado Global at all, army. but we will Global take army. it because we don't want to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you, you might have a drought, you know, when you get up there, it's like, it gets dry. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you already know. It's so yeah. dry here. <laughs> but I love well, it. I am super excited to talk about this album and to talk about you. And if you guys have been living under a rock, you have <laughs> definitely know, you know who Don Richard is. <laughs> From MTV's Making the Band, a girl group called Danny Kane in the early 2000s. But now she is a breakout star. She is solo. She is a vet. She has been at this for several years now, dropping her sixth album, Second Line. I'm super excited to talk about it. But before we talk about that, I just want to get a little bit of your journey and how have you grown over these past 15 years? Because you have done so much within the music industry You've been independent. You've been in a girl group. You've gone solo. You've moved around quite a bit. And yeah, I just want to get just a little snapshot of what that journey has looked like for you. It's been a wild one. I think my my uh, my my story is just truly unconventional. Like, you know, I kind of, when the, in the midst of my career, Katrina happened, Hurricane Katrina. So like, I was like homeless when my career started. So I had like nothing. And I was kind of riding on, what Danity King would be for me. And then I was signed to a major label. So like, that was a huge, I was like born into crazy, like but born into overwhelming, manufactured, like the idea of what a pop girl group mainstream was what we were. Um, and I kind of went through that world, always kind of knowing that I, I grew up loving alternative music, grew up loving electronic, from the South, black girl from the Lord Night War, love that kind of music. So I mean, my first concerts were Green Day, yeah. Alanis Morissette, you know, like uh, that was from Portishead to Bush to uh, Kay's Choice, Biff Naked. I was an indie girl, all yes. right? So I didn't, you know, I, I always, in my mind, that's what I loved, Bjork, that was what I knew. And, you know, FX Twin, Massive Attack, uh, so. Right. So for me, getting in a girl group wasn't necessarily the end game. As a writer, I thought I could really get in anything because I loved, you know, the art of just music itself. But I always knew what I wanted to do and what, how, what kind of music I wanted to make. I did not realize that my journey would take me where it went. Uh, but I wound up being in a pop girl group. And then I wound up being in a hip hop soul to soul group with my boss became my group member mm -hmm. and Diddy Dirty Money. Uh, he both canceled both those groups on his own journey. He didn't let us know, little to, little to my knowledge. He just decided he didn't want to do those anymore. Surprise. And, Surprise. I don't want this anymore. <laughs> and I'm like, wait, I don't have anything else. Right. <laughs> right. Because I was homeless. So basically, like, my, my, I, I, there was no other, you know, I had gotten my degree, but I really wasn't. Music was all I knew. And so the DIY quest began. Um, and I was a black girl at the time, eight years ago, it, it, indie, which it wasn't popular. Being That's a black right. girl, being indie and anything that was not R&B or hip hop was just a no go because oh. we weren't being really given a lot of platforms. You know, it, I, have, I mean, we have examples of that from mainstream Fifi Dobson, who is an incredible well, we just she was mainstream and we didn't give her a shot. Right. Khalees, yes. another incredible talent who yes. was a mainstream artist, still doesn't get the worth of what she is. So imagine being that 
with no ma major machine. That was very difficult for me because I, I knew off out the gate as a solo artist what I wanted to be. Thus became my journey backwards from a mainstream artist to a DIY. I went from 50,000 people in a crowd to 100 people in a dive bar and I had to recalibrate. Uh, and that, be, yeah, and that became the really cool journey of making some of the, my, my best work um, and also being respected as an artist because I didn't realize being in a pop girl group, people didn't take me seriously. I didn't realize that until after I started doing my work and they were saying, oh, you're ambitious. Oh, this is really good. Oh, exactly. you know, like I was like, compliment. yeah. And I was like, wait, <laughs> I thought I was all, <laughs> I thought I was always doing cool stuff. I didn't know that, you know, being a black woman doing this kind of music would take me to the journey that I have. So my unconventional journey took me from being signed to Bad Boy to being signed to Merge Records, which is a completely different, no one would have thought that that would be any journey for any black girl in the industry to be truthful, but just any artist period, because they, they kind of count you out as soon as you don't have a label. And especially coming from Bad Boy, there is not a lot of artists that survive after, they call it a curse, right? right? Uh, a lot of people don't survive it. And uh, for me to still be here years later, I'm very grateful. Oh, That's the, you. the short pitch right there. <laughs> it's so funny. I feel like I've been following your journey since <laughs> Bad Boy Records. And since right. And to watch you go through this indie journey has been super inspiring. And Thank especially you. as a Black woman that works in a predominantly white space, um, I'm sure that you have stories and experiences through all of that because you already touched on it, Merge Records, an amazing huge label that used to have like uh, Arcade Fire, but now has like Waxahachi and Caribou. Love Waxahachi, yeah, and um, Caribou too. Much. Yeah, and they no got this cool girl white, too. Uh, like, you were one of the first like black artists signed to this major. Label. Yeah, like I, when I, that was one of my reservations, right? When I saw the roster, because I was rejected by everyone. And I like literally, like when I left Puff, I didn't want to leave Puff, Puff just didn't want to sign me as a solo artist. Yeah. So when I left, nobody would touch me for whatever reason. I don't, that could be because of Puff, that could be, I never got a reason for that. I just, right. it, no one would talk. So I, it became very difficult for me to try to find a home. Mm -hmm. For indie labels, I wasn't indie enough. I wasn't weird enough, right? Yeah. And then for major labels, I was too weird, right? The music yeah. was just not commercial. So I just fit in this really weird place um, that nobody wanted to really give me a shot. Like I would try the indie, you know, the cool kids, as you would call them. And yeah. they would just be like, your music is a little too structured. Yeah. You know, and, and so I had to try to find a space. So it took me literally eight years of being on my own, like no managers, no t like scrounging at the bit, getting rejected by this person, that person to really find my way. And then literally on this album, finally found a label that I think, you know, I, I didn't want to sign with it because I was like, where are the black people? When I when I looked at the label, <laughs> because I felt this album was really black, right? Yes. And we were in a time where black culture, but here's the truth. I did want to sign with a, a black label, but black, black labels didn't want to take a chance on me. That's a truth. That's a truth statement. I, I tried and they just didn't get it. They didn't want to support it. That's, a, that's for me. And I, and I think we need to have that discussion because yes. that's the truth, right? Um, so here's this project that to me is enveloped in New Orleans. And then I said, okay, well, let me do some research. And then I saw they had Destroyer, Car Caribou. And I was like, why am I looking at it as a color thing? I need to go where people will support me. So I, we had a meeting and they just really, I had the album already finished and they just loved the message. They loved what I was trying to do. And they said, look, we don't want to tell you what to do. We just want to support this because we think this is gold. Uh, and so we went from there and they have been amazing they have been amazing and it has been really cool because I feel like I've not la like I've not lacked any of the blackness that I wanted yes. the message that I've wanted to tell about black women in electronic music uh has is still present and it is to the forefront of the conversations that I'm having so you touched on a couple of things as well that I just one yes we need to be having the conversation about black artists black labels um, within the music industry that aren't working with each other because of these tropes that we have. But mm -hmm. I love that Merge heard heard your vision and saw, mm -hmm. um, because you have producing credits on this album too, mm -hmm. which is also major, and wanted to back your vision and support your project. So did you feel like now with this validation, do you feel like you have more creative freedom to continue to do 
the things that you want to do and continue to have more writing credits, more producing credits, all that kind of stuff, collaboration across label or whatever, um, now that you have been embraced by this label. Now. Yeah, I, you know, I don't really feel like I had validation. I just kind of felt like they saw me on a level that I wanted to be seen on. To be honest, the creative control that I've had prior, I had already. Yeah. Like my entire career, I've built that. So they just basically were like, let's let's feed some of this. They, they just basically mm. came behind me and was like, let's make an army with you. So yes. they didn't take any... There was no validation. It was more like, we don't get why everybody else is late, but we're, we're, we're coming on board with you. And that's what it felt like. And, oh. and, and so for me, I've not stopped any formula. I've kept the same formula that I've done with all the other albums. I just have a team, yes. something I never had. And even from the beginning of my career, and I hate to say this because the truth is, I wish it was different, but this is the most that I've ever had this type of belief in my art ever. This is with or without mainstream. And it sucks because I really wish I would have had more with my my boss being a black man with with I wish that was the case, uh, especially when you had two black girls in a predominantly white girl group. I yeah. wish we had more support and we just didn't even in Dirty Money being with Kalina and being another chocolatey girl standing next to three. But I wish more people believed in what we were trying to do enough to keep it. This is the first time I've been with a team that says, nah, you're what you're saying we back so it wasn't necessarily validation it was just belief yeah like having people really believe in your message and, and it took me as well. and respect it right so I've always had a collaborative uh uh approach to my music even with other producers that I've worked with no album I've worked with the same producer so I've yeah. always had this sound and been able to do it but I think with this because I am DIY I never had an opportunity to really pursue my production credits because I had to be financier, booker, art director, builder yep. of stage. So there were just so many things I had. I couldn't do it all. Uh, and I think, <laughs> but it just, I had no choice, right? And all these, all my DIY people, you know, you know, like yep. you have to be thousands of things. And I felt like if I, everything I had to do, I had to learn to my best. Right. So it took me a while to get to really taking the time to really produce this and work with Ela Orbis, who was an incredible producer that helped me work with this project and create really great black producer, uh, to really help me nurture this project. Um, and that's been a really uh, fun thing for me is to finally say, okay, guys, not only am I an artist, but I do, I am, like I've been producing this sound yeah. since I got out of my groups. This has been, uh, this sound is not new. It's yeah. just people are now just discovering what I've been really trying to do for a long time. Right, and they're really hearing you now. Yeah, and I'm very- <laughs> Not just your and music, I, and I, Yeah, music not just, exactly, <laughs> because it's bigger. Like this album is bigger. It's it's really talking about the fact that dance and electronic music has always been cultivated by black culture, but we've not been giving us the respect of putting us within these playlists and these, you know, these, these award shows. And like the fact that Kitronata just got a Grammy- Deserved. You know, for some, Overdue. So deserved, overdue, <laughs> but there are thousands of others, you know, like black women who are DJs who have not been on the rosters at the festivals. That's like there's conversations that need to happen. The fact that electronic music isn't just a DJ, right? Or a producer with featured songs, yes. featured artists. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of the time, the biggest artists, like even the Catronadas and all of those really incredible artists, they still have featured artists like Caliuchis and yes. all these amazing artists who are great, but that's not the only part of electronic. There are artists That's who right. also are producers, singers, dancers that we haven't really, uh, we haven't really given, yeah, that we haven't tapped into yeah. or given the same respect to. Uh, exactly. And I would really love to just start to have that conversation more because it just, I don't want those people to leave. I just think that women need to be more present in it. There are really great female DJs. There are really great female artists not just producers, but artists mm -hmm. who are great for the electronic space that needs to be seen. If you Absolutely. look at the electronic uh, iTunes, Apple, it's the, it goes, it varies, but most of the year, it's the same people in the top 20. Mm -hmm. And it's a revolving door of very white people. Yeah, and it goes the same and for speckles shows. speckles of blacks, yeah, and speckles of black just kind of in there as they get, you know, that's not right. true to the culture, you know, it's that's just true. not, yeah. No, I totally agree. And I feel like this conversation is needs to be continued to be amplified as well, because mm -hmm. that 
kind of representation shows up in who gets booked for shows and who gets booked yeah. for festivals and who yeah. goes to those, you know? So And you look at the bill too, and it's like, you could e- easily, when you see the DJ booth, it's mostly men. And if there is women, they are not black. That's right. They're not black. Like that's the yeah. truth. Yeah. And if you look at the po- the 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 respect of black culture, uh, black culture in electronic, it is very Thundercat, Fly Low, K Trinata. It's a very. It's as if we took these five people and said we're gonna give them that's love, it. and then that's it. Like, yeah. which they need to be there. Don't take them off because we need yes. them. They they we. That's our that's our guys. Yes. But it's just like it's as if they said that's. That's, That's the, the res- that you we respect to them, it. yeah, and then good luck to everybody else. And I just think that there, there. Are, let's be careful that we're mi- we're not, you know, we're, we're missing out on the entire genre of queer culture who That's is a ballroom it. and dance and bounce who are also belonging in dance. That it's not rap; it's belonging in dance too, right? We gotta have a discussion about like making sure we're not limiting. A, a genre, two genres that belong, that has such a beautiful un- umbrella of possibility. Right, and boxing people in. Yeah, that's and that's, that goes for rock and indie too. Like we're now right. just seeing black girls and like Poppy, white girl was the first in heavy metal to be nominated at the Grammy. She's the only one. Yeah. You can't it's tell like, me that not there's news. not other black, <laughs> but you can't tell me there's not other female heavy metal. You can't tell me that, that she's the only one. Like we didn't, you can't tell me that, so there's no black, Rock, rock and roll artists that like we just go act. There's not, they're not out there, That's and it's right. taken for Willow, who again, yes. who again, because of who she is and the power she has. Thank you. We're now just having a discussion, but I think it's interesting that it took a powerhouse like Willow for us to finally have the discussion. I will take yes. it though because it's it's needed, you know. And I hope yeah. with this with this new thing she's doing with Travis Barker and all of them that we start to see the the black girl in yes. so many different spaces. Yeah. We need more of that. More. Well, let's talk about your album. Let's do it. Uh, So second line, your sixth LP that came out in April. It is seriously one of my favorite albums of 2021 so far. Um, One, because it's extremely versatile. You can literally, you can dance to it at home in your mirror. You can bop to it at the club if those open. Who knows? (laughs) You can do a long drive. Collective. It just has so many different elements to it. And you've received a ton of positive reviews across the board as well. And so I just want to know, like, how has your life shifted since putting out this compilation? Because you can feel your heart in it. And I, I think that your audience has received it in that way of like, there's so much to take out of this compilation. So yeah, I just want to know, like, what has been going on in the month since it's been out? Well, almost months since it's been out. I just, a lot of greatness. I got my first billboard because of this process in the sa- and it was in the same space that I made the band fifth in 2005 directly. So that was wild, right? Full circle moment for me. Um, I think bigger than anything, it's very difficult to keep putting out projects and people, you know, take your concept seriously enough where they, you know, they see it as a work of art. And yeah. I've always tried as an artist to make sure that I was purposeful and intentional with the music that I put out, I think was second line, it's my best work. And that's wild to say as my sixth album. Um, because usually in your early years, you know, you really find your sound and you can't top it. You know, you right. can't top. I feel like I'm just getting started, you know, and I think yeah. second line is my opus. Yes. And I think it is because I've tapped into who I am as an artist, as, as, as an artist sonically, visually, but also I feel like the time is now caught up with the message. That's right. Um, And that's huge for me. So I think the reason why this project is the best for me is because I think the times have now caught up to the possibility of what we can be as Black people, as Black artists. But beyond that, that uh, the idea of what an artist is has transcended. Yeah. And this album speaks to that, right? It is a, it is a, you know, I, New Orleans coming from the city that I come from, people always think of it as a city of the past, heritage yes. and roots. That is true. Mm-hmm. But I also feel like it is a city with possibility. Um, and we are, we are meshed with all these different things, these different colors, creeds, religions. We have a church, St. Louis Cathedral, where we have tarot cards being delivered right in front of the, the Catholic church. Yes. If that doesn't speak to the versatility of, of the city, the diversity of the city. I don't know what does, but it speaks to also why I made an album that is that yeah. versatile, 
right? It speaks to what the city is, right? It can be, it's just as versatile as the album. And I wanted to take you guys to a post-apocalyptic New Orleans, a sci-fi New Orleans, a Blade Runner New Orleans, right? Yeah, a futuristic (laughs) New Orleans, right? And I think that's something that we haven't seen the South ever being. The South is pigeonholed with nooses and slavery and, right? And this, the the past. It's scary. It's It's dark. And I just, I didn't see that when I was born. I, what I saw as an art, what music was for me being from the South was this. This is who I was. It made this. And I wanted to show a different side of culture. And I wanted to do it in a space where in a genre, because I don't, I don't think this, this album is just one genre. I say electronic. I call it an electro revival because it's, it's, it's so an electro at the same time. You're but I, jumping I, ahead. No, I'm sorry. I, but I'm just saying that to say I chose to do electronic because they look at it as a linear thing. And I think mm. I wanted to put culture in a space where they think electronic is a four to the floor and right. a linear thing only. It has no soul. Right. I wanted to make an album that sh- showcased that's so untrue and how beautiful you can put passion and soul and like you said, um, reflect reflection into a, an a, a, a ele- electronic project. I love that you call it like an electro revival and I like that it has multiple sounds on it for people who are just starting to get to know you and get to know your art because this has jazz, it has classical music, it has funk, it has R&B, it has a little bit of everything for anyone and I just love the electro revival. It's like a nice introduction into who Don Richard is. And so um, you explaining this, is there anything specific that you would want like a new listener to take away from this album? I think uh, bigger than anything is that uh, there is is something to be said about uh, soul, Mm -hmm. right? like soul uh, being in all spaces. And I think we need to, my biggest takeaway for any listener is take the color out of, uh, out of the music, right? Take my race out of it. Stop. Don't, because I sing the way I sing now I'm R and B. So, right. Like it's so soulful. You put a run in there and it's nope. (laughs) You know, you're R&B not, now. You're R&B now. <laughs> yeah, but I can also be many, right? Yes. What I what I want the listener to take away is let's don't close your eyes and transcend, right? Yes. Don't look at this to be a genre. Don't look at this to be a racial thing. Mm-hmm. Look at this to be an experience where it can take you. I want them, somebody to have a cathartic experience when they listen to this. And to me, when you said you said this album has a little bit of everything. New Orleans has a bit of everything. Yeah. Right. Um, and so that I made an album that is not uh, literally brass, you know, brass exactly. music. And I made something that the New Orleans represents the actual story, the journey of what this is. A second line is a death. Of, we celebrate the death of, you know, the legacy of someone. Yeah. I'm getting rid of the old idea of what an artist is. And I want to celebrate and dance into the new of what it can be and what we are becoming. And that's what I want artists, people, listeners to take away from this process and this album. So what's second line? Because um, my family's from Louisiana. Yeah. We know a lot about that, but I know people don't traditionally know what a second line is and you explained it perfectly. Yeah. Um, So with this album, you've already explained that you kind of want it to be a death to what music was and what the idea of that is and yeah. um, going into the change of what's to come. What else are you looking forward to? What else are you hoping to leave behind? Even if it doesn't have to specifically do with the album. Yeah. Well, it does though, because I think um, I'm not, a, I'm not ashamed of my birth. Right. So the album represents the machine, which is the Android King Creole is the, the Android yes. side, which is me being born in mainstream. Yes. So when I say I'm celebrating when something dies, we don't look at it as a negative. We celebrate the home going. Yes. So I'm celebrating the fact that I, I did come from the machine and it, it it was not all perfect, but I don't ever take away the opportunity that I got it. I got the opportunity. And so 
that part of the album and that part of this process will ever forever be my grateful. It started that way. But the second half of the album is the human side of King Creole. Yes. And that's the vulnerability, the DIY, the, the mistakes I've made to try to figure it out without the machine. Um, and that's that dance, that dance to celebrate that new thing um, is crucial for me. And it has been beautiful to leave behind something that birthed me. Uh, but it is even stronger to dance in what I've become from it. Yes. And that's what this has been about. And that's really what the second line is in general is, you know, when we celebrate the death of someone, we don't just dance in what, you know, th that they're, you, you know, they left a legacy, but we're dancing for what they've left behind and what we can take with it and make something from it, right? Yes. Whatever that legacy they left, that's our tools to yeah. keep moving on. And that's what I want people to, that's what I'm seeing for myself. And I hope, hope this album can be that for other people, but that's in general, what I would, you know, what I'm taking away from the, the past to now. Well, I love Second Line. I know so many people do. But before I let you go, speaking mm -hmm. of dancing, yes, uh, your visuals, I oh, just yay. can <laughs> bust it for me, like real quick. I, <laughs> when I saw this video, I was like, one, how can I get this velvet jumpsuit? I need yes, it. Yes, velvet. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> and two, it's just such a positive celebration of Black femininity. And mm -hmm. I just want to, all of your videos that I've seen so far have been just so joyous. You're so in the moment. It's, it's like you transcended. You just like went into your music, you went into your zone and then that is all that is it. And I just want to know what are some of the concepts from some of the visuals that you've created for this project? And do you have any more visuals planned for the singles off of this album? I do. I'm not going to, I'm going to keep going with the sing with the, with the visuals on this. People know me. Visuals is the thing for me. I, I, I grew up like the, how I got introduced to music was through Chris Cunningham, one of my favorite directors. So visuals have always been the thing for me. Um, with, with a uh, second line, I actually took a step back from what I normally do. I had been doing VR virtual reality visuals five years before I was going extra hard. Yes. And I felt like if I was going to do a post-apocalyptic New Orleans, things had to look raw. Yes. So the visuals, the way we look, the lighting, everything's a bit darker. Hair is not perfect. There's, you know, the makeup is sometimes smeared. And there's this level of like, we've just been through a wipe down. And now the first beings that you see after this post-apocalyptic world is Black women. What a world. And there's some... Right. Uh, so like in New Orleans, after everything, the Terminator, Blade Runner, this desolate world, the first beings you see are these chocolatey women of all different sizes right because yes. my dancers are from all right and we're all in cornrows straight down oh. and it's it's just kind of this cockiness of like we're meant to be the first yeah. right we're meant to be here to do this and that's really what each visual is you know embodies whether it's jacuzzi whether yeah. it's busted for me whether it's 504 you always see this kind of dirty thing at set up and then black women just kind of sitting there. And I just thought that that was really cool to do because it's, again, it's intention. I'm really proving that we belong in this space. We've been here mm -hmm. uh, and I am not the first. I want that to be clear, but I do want to break a ceiling so that there many can follow. Yes. And so, yeah. so many people can go and look at those visuals and be like, I want to be that. I want yeah. That. Yeah. Okay. And also, and then also create my own, whatever that is. Right. Yes. Because that the, the hope is that King Creole is all of us, all of us who ever felt like we've never had a place. We've been like waving our hands, like, no, we've been here. You know, we are the assassins that are going to take our, our places in the next, in the next, in the new world. And, you know, I can't wait for that moment. Yeah. Don, this has been a pleasure. Thank it's you. Us. Yay. Thank you. And I am so excited that I got to talk to you and, yeah um thank you to everybody else that was watching um go and stream second line stream right it now, now. <laughs> <laughs> and make sure to listen to nd 1023 because we are playing don singles all day er day and spinning them supporting black women all the, all day just all the time and yeah go and follow don on all of her socials as well mm -hmm. and support her work and her projects and if you want more nd1023 sessions head to nd1023.org and under the nd1023 sessions tab you can find all of them there and also on our youtube and we will see you next time
Thank you, Don. Thank you, Mama. Bye, everyone.